Morning all. I have a very interesting game to show you this morning. It was from the Reykjavik Open this year. So just being played on the 11th of March, just a few days ago, a couple of days ago from this video. So Daniel Bisbee, a British FIDE master, was playing white in round three. His FIDE rating is 2-3-2-1. He was playing against the ranked 78 grandmaster in the world, Sergei Mavzevsian, 2-6-6-5. Sergei Mavzevsian is a grandmaster since 1997 of Armenian descent, a citizen of Slovakia and used to play for the Czech Republic and for Slovakia before resuming playing for Armenia in 2011. So Daniel was up against it here. Would he be able to have a good game against his 2665 GM? He kicks off with e4 after c5. Knight f3, e6. Daniel plays a solid kind of aggressive setup that Fisher used to play quite a lot, the King's Engine attack system, where White is playing this kind of structure with d3 and often Finn chattering the bishop, trying to get a stranglehold on the e5 square as a basis for an attack later. So could this work against Sergei Movzevsian? D5, Queen E2. Okay, it blocks in the bishop, but the bishop wants the Fincetto in any case. So it's still what I consider solid aggressive, this opening. And not so theoretical, you don't have to learn tons of opening theory here. Knight E7, G3. So the bishop is Fincettoing. Black plays B6. Bishop g2, bishop b7, white castles, knight bc6, and here white's venturing the move e5. He wants to overprotect the e5 point ideally, but black's next move shows deep understanding of the position. h6, as though g5 and bishop g7 to try and not only put pressure on e5, but also facilitate maybe g4 later. This e5 form could be shaky. A double-edged sword, cramping Black's position at the moment, but her potential weakness. Very interesting move from Daniel here. H4 to stop this. G5. We see G6. Still the bishop's pin chattering. So it would seem that Black is reacting in a very solid way and challenging that aggressive pawn. C3. The troops are being brought to try and support the pawn with D4 later potentially, but. Uh, Okay, at the moment, bishop g7. Pawn isn't yet in mortal danger. Knight a3, and the pawn actually supports now knight b5 to d6, potentially. Bishop a6, stopping knight b5, and preventing d4, which would be supporting the e5 pawn. So it seems a very good move on the surface. Rook e1, further gripping e5 like this. Queen d7. Rook b1, and now there's an intention of b4, b5. That would exploit that configuration. Black reacts with knight f5, ready to meet b4 now by using the d4 square. If b4 is played here, c takes, c takes, knight cd4, and that's annoying. This position could be quite annoying, and in fact, b5 could be stopped in its tracks, with black being slightly better here. So after knight f5 something radical is played. g4 just kicking that knight to facilitate b4. Knight f7, b4. So is this worth it to threaten b5? Well it's a very very interesting position now. Knight d8 disconnecting the rooks and this rook's a bit loose. Look at this diagonal. Does white want to open up the center now? B takes C5 is played, opening up that B file, potentially dangerous for landing on B8 in certain variations later. Takes C4 actually gives Knight B5 a real go now, supporting that B5 square, but also this diagonal is looking a bit loose. Black plays now H5. He wants to punish White for these pawns, maybe grab this F5 square for his knight and target the H4 pawn. So what does white want to do here? 
a very interesting move in the circumstance. You might think you don't really want to take care because that's clearly isolating the pawn. A move like g5, is that ideal though to play something like g5? Not necessarily. After knight f5, black might have a comfortable position or just castling. His king would be quite safe, potentially. So we see here actually a more open opening up the position type move with g takes h5. Okay, so we have rook takes h5. We've got this isolated pawn. Knight f5 looks to be attacking h4. But now white gains a little bit of time. Knight b5 threatening knight d6. Knight f5 stops knight d6. And here, possibly a good move to consider would have been bishop g5 here holding h4. And this is quite a good position for white. For example, if king f8, maybe white can play bishop h3 and then bishop g4 later. So threatening something like bishop takes f5 is a nuisance. Say here, bishop g4. This this is a pleasant enough position with white maintaining that bind on e5. But uh, okay, we have a much more aggressive move. d4. So offering in variations that h4 pawn, black took on d4 here, and we have c takes d5, the queen sporting b5 as well as the rook. And now there's a threat of knight c7 check as well. Queen takes d5 is out of the question. We play knight c7 check. But in any case, knight c7 is on the cards here just to win the bishop potentially. Which would be useful. So black sidesteps this, king f8, and now we have this d6 move. These pawns look quite aggressive, this diagonal looks useful. And if white's given another move, bishop g5 would hold the h pawn, potentially. That's useful as well. Black plays here rook b8. The knight is supported, and now black plays knight takes h4. So, does white have enough compensation for this loss of the h-pawn? Knight takes, rook takes, bishop g5, hitting the rook, and also bishop e7 looks useful. Now, this pin is further exploited, it seems, with d3. The rook is going to snap off a4 and undermine this knight. Seems like a very powerful move in the circumstance. Queen takes d3. Rook takes a4, with b5 looking a little bit loose, but there's magnificently powerful move in this position. This magnificent move does several things at once. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you five seconds, starting from now. Okay, the move is queen h3. We've set up a pin on the e6 pawn. That queen is loose there on d7. We've got a pin on d5 in, in theory. But also, the king's moved to f8. And this is quite tactically significant, actually, that the h7 square is not protected. So it's kind of loose square, not just a loose piece here, but a loose square. And the queen's eyeing both. And that's actually quite dangerous uh, if black for example, played rook takes b5. We can use that loose square in inverted commas by taking on b5. And if queen takes b5, you might think bishop takes d8. But actually, far more powerful would be queen h7. And this is really, really dangerous for black. There's a threat here of check, king e8, and queen g8. For example, bishop b7 as an example, check, queen g8, queen takes d8, checkmate. So that queen h7 infiltration is really dangerous in this position. Forget taking the knight. 
and if bishop takes b5 queen h7 again same sort of thing uh multiple threats here bishop f6 is also really dangerous just leave a pawn in f6 we're mating that potentially if f6 for example like this black could get absolutely mashed could end up losing a lot of material so this queen h7 is extremely dangerous Sergei Movsian must have realized that he played king g8 was uh, played to protect h7 and this gives the knight a chance to do something now knight c7 looking at the rook of course something has to be done about that rook takes b1 rook takes b1 white is now threatening things like bishop f6 still rook b8 looking at d8 black here tries to at least parry rook b8 with this next move bishop takes e5 preventing the wrong the the king from coming out so if rook b8 here there'll be check and ouch that's horrible okay so in fact though white has another fantastic move in this position can you spot it if I give you five seconds starting from now okay knight d5 using the pen so there were two things that queen h3 was doing it was looking at h7 and it was also pinning this e6 pawn which is now being used so knight f6 check, major threat, as well as bishop f6. In the game, rook a5 was played. And it looks quite clever on the surface that the rook might be defending by h5 here. For example, knight f6 takes, takes, black has rook h5. But uh, no, white doesn't need to do that. To allow that resource no instead there's, there's there's very good moves in this position bishop f6 is one of them first thing mate like this and if it takes them we're forking the king and queen that'd be nice so in fact after bishop f6 what defense is there for black the rook's not helping the bishop can't help the king is getting mated on h8 for example king f8 queen h8 checkmate so after bishop f6 Sergei Obsefsian resigned what a fantastic game from Daniel Bisbee and it lets him have the fantastic score three out of three in the Reykjavik Open comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much